This is Oscar from Hammerfall, and you're watching Heavy New York. Heavy, 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 heavy New York. What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at the PlayStation Theater, and we got Oscar of the Almighty Hammerfall. Thank you for your time, man. No problem at all. Thank you for having me. Of course. So your newest record is Dominion, which uh, came out earlier this year. Do you consider this just like an appropriate follow-up to the last record, Built to Last, or do you think that this record is like a new start for Hammerfall? Maybe a little bit of both, uh, but I think that the actual like rebirth was with Revolution, because uh, after that we, I mean, before that we took a br bit of a break for 18 months, nothing to do with you know writing songs or releasing albums or anything like that, uh, and that was really valuable for everybody. We came back with uh, recharged batteries, fresh minds, and that's sort of how I see uh, sort of the the new beginning, if you want to call it that. Uh, but that was 2014. I think with Built to Last and Dominion, these three albums have a lot in common. Not just the fact that we recorded them in the same places in the similar situations, uh, but also because they are, the, the, I think Dominion is a good mix of, of both those and the or, earlier Hammerfall works as well. Well, do you, you kind of like led me into my next question because you know, you have so many records now in your catalog. Do you take a new approach to every album or is there kind of like a formula that like ties in all the albums in your catalog together? Um, it's a little bit different now than it was, let's say, 10 years ago, because earlier you could take a, a bit of a, a couple of months break before, before the, like, actually not a break, but like a songwriting period, you know, that we, we don't do any shows, any gigs, nothing really is in, in, interfering with the writings of the songs, and we can't really afford to do that anymore, so uh, that has made things different in, in a way. I think in a really good way, because this one... For Dominion, I learned how to write songs on the road, for example. Normally, I always write songs in my house when I'm comfortable in my sort of comfort zone, I guess you could say. Uh, but I tried to write songs on tour and on vacations and stuff, just when inspiration strikes, uh, strikes basically. you know, Instead of thinking, oh, I feel inspired today. I can't wait to get home next week. Then, and then the inspiration is gone. You know? I said, just take advantage of the situation is what I'm trying to do. Yeah. You led me into my next question because you say inspiration comes out of nowhere, right? It's not like you have to like yeah. put yourself in a certain element in order to get inspired, right? No, not really. I mean, that usually never uh, never works. You know, sometimes I can go out in the studio and like my job now is more like that now than than it was 10, 15 years ago. Then then it was just oh, I write songs. Uh, it doesn't matter what time it is, a day or a night or whatever. It didn't matter because I was only there was only me, right? Now I got a family, I got a more of a structured life at home, uh, which means that uh, I'm way too tired in the middle of the night. You know, I have different sleeping patterns now as well. So um, I, I try to treat it a little bit when I'm home, just like not every day to go out there and sit between eight and, and five. You know, I can't do that. That's impossible. Then nothing good will come out of that. But sometimes I go out in the studio. Maybe I don't feel it right away, but you, you could feel it after a little while. And if I don't you know, go back in again, it's no problem, you know. Uh, and that has helped a lot to have that sort of freedom uh, uh, because I have the, the studio is located on my property, so I don't have, don't have to walk a couple of like uh, 30 feet or something to get there. Yeah. And so that helps also with uh, just having everything uh, right there. But uh, as far as like the, the when the inspiration strikes, it's good to be able to take advantage of it. And that's basically what, what I changed this time. Uh, it, it, I can't really force it. I don't think anybody really can. What if you get an idea where you like don't have your guitar present or something like that? Or happens a lot. Like for example, a, a chorus for what's probably going to be on the next album. I don't know yet, but I'm guessing. I mean, this is this is a full song now. Uh, that chorus I I came up with on uh, in the gym actually on a not a treadmill because I don't do those, but was these cross trainers, yeah. uh, and I I was watching I probably UFC I think because that's usually what I watch when I work out. And I, I thought, uh, hang on, this is a pretty good, like, nah, 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 whatever it was, you know. Well, completely, and the lyrics might not be there, but I had the lyrics. I was singing uh, like a, a proper lyrics for it. And I thought, okay, 
hope nobody probably will hear me if I just take my phone and sing into it. <laughs> so I did. And uh, eventually, I mean, it, it was good enough so that I, I, and I sang it for myself. I was just standing there. Uh, and seen stranger things at the gym. <laughs> probably, right? Uh, but so when I got back, or it didn't, I didn't do it right away, but I, I brought that out a little bit later. Like, I need a chorus here. Didn't I have, what, you know, didn't I do something at the gym? And I took it out. It was a perfect fit. And then so, you know, stuff like that. It, it, it really varies a lot, you know. Of course. Now, in terms of, like, guitar playing, is there, like, a music theory element that you follow to? Like, I'm working off of this scale and this key and this mode. You don't follow any yeah. of that? I don't know any scales, really. I mean, Pontus have taught me some. Uh, see, I, I'm, a, I'm a self-taught guitar player, so I never really took any lessons. I started out really early, like my very first two, three weeks maybe, with acoustic guitar lessons, more bluesy kind of thing, but that was not for me. Because I got the, um, I wanted to play heavy metal guitar, you know, that's why I started playing in the first place. Or I wanted to play the music that I was listening to, basically. And uh, this guy thought heavy metal, I mean, we're talking 86 now, or yeah, 86 probably. And this guy was from the, like, his version of heavy metal was from the 70s. And I was really not interested in Jimi Hendrix and Deep Purple. You know. So uh, I wanted to play Accept and Judas Priest. And so I started to, to just listen to this music and learn from that. But that also means I don't really know exactly what I'm playing. I just know when, I, when it feels right. But that's how I built my whole career on that. Yeah. You know, just feels, feeling, if it feels good, if it feels right or or metal enough or whatever the hell you want to call it you know just feeling is positive then it's yeah. there yeah. uh here's the next question i want to ask you this is my favorite question to ask everybody because it's always the hardest question for every musician to answer how do you know when a song is done um <laughs> when uh, it reaches the end i guess <laughs> now i mean yeah it, it's uh it's never done until you actually go into the studio, and not even then. There are little things you can fi tweak and, and fiddle with to make it better. Uh, but like the, the, when I I know the demo is done roughly uh, is when I um, when I have a beginning and an ending, like the one that says red thread going through the whole song. And then sometimes you go back and change things. But I've been doing this for long enough that I I can trust my gut instincts. And I have a pretty good feeling of what I like, and it seems to be what other people like. I mean, I, I know what Hammerfall, what I want Hammerfall to be, basically, and that's always my baseline for everything. And if I'm happy with it, uh, and I also do this. I mean, I try to to write, uh, to to, uh, to listen to the songs when they're done. I mean, I, when, when I'm talking and I'm done, I, there's usually no lyrics on them, you know, or, or vocal melodies even. Sometimes some, but not much. Uh, but uh, that's when Joachim comes in and does his part. But um, when I uh, when I, I uh, finish a song, I let it lie for a while, maybe work on another one or just don't work at all for a while, just l clear my head a little bit. Uh, and then I go back and listen to it, and I try to listen to it as, not as a fan, but as somebody who didn't write the music, you know, just to be able to enjoy it on a different in a different way. And um, that's usually my, my uh, you know, this way or that way, so to speak, good or bad, kind of, you know, that, that's, uh, but, and sometimes if I'm happy, if I, if this is really good, I go out and, and I blast it for a little bit, uh, you know, a couple of days later, and j even if it's half finished, so by when the song is actually done, it's this usually, it, it doesn't take from, from start to finish, it doesn't take a day, you know, it takes a month or something, so I have a lot of these along the way, so like, uh, maybe I know that this far, like two minutes of the song is great, the rest may need some changing, and then I listen to that and, and go back and change that. So uh, it's it's. I think every song is different. You know, some songs like on the new album, "One Against the World" was written in a couple of hours. You know, it's yeah, it's pretty. And that usually never happens. I mean, a couple of times maybe in my whole career, maybe you know, maybe twice. Uh, but uh, a, a song like "Sweden Rock," for example, was written. I mean, it was most of the part was written over a couple of months, but it took until like eight months or something to actually finish like now it's good you know now we have everything you know so it varies yeah 
And I have uh, two more questions for you, but uh, seeing you live is a completely different experience, I feel, than just simply listening to the album with your use of crowd interaction. You know, you have some of the loudest, like when I heard, like, when I heard you guys at the Brooklyn Bazaar show, like, that was just crunching so well live. And when it comes to playing your material live, is there a different energy that, or a different strategy in playing live? Is it a completely different energy than just simply playing in the studio or in a practice space? Yeah, I mean, it is, obviously, because you have that, uh, you feed off the audience and, and give them something in return as well, you, like the interaction. Uh, you can't recreate that in the studio. But uh, what we have tried to do in the studio is to capture the live energy that we have playing-wise. And I, we've tried it all every every album, and I don't think we have managed to capture it better than on the Dominion album, I don't think. so. Uh, but play, playing live, of course, gives you an, an extra shot of adrenaline. There's, you, know, you can't get around that. And the final question I wanted to ask you is, I brought it up uh, when we spoke at NAMM in 2018. I can't believe that was almost two years ago. Uh, but, yeah, uh, yeah. but um, yeah. you know, coming from, like, you know, Sweden, the Gothenburg scene, you know, I mean, you brought it up. I mean, it's not a coincidence that, you know, in the past you've had members from Dark Tranquility and In Flames in the band. And so it was it easier to start a band in Sweden just because it was such a metal capital? Um, possibly, yes, uh, in the way that there are always people to play with. But... Um, uh, and, and in terms of starting a heavy metal band in 1993, it was not very easy. Uh, I, I f formed, I, I, like, I had the idea, that the name, this is the type of music we're going to do, and this is like, we're going to wear leather and jeans, just like, uh, like you know, Judas Priest and all, the, my, all our heroes. Uh, but I, I didn't really go, like, looking for members. I just asked my friends who I knew liked these, this also melodic music somewhat, because most of the people didn't like this stuff anymore in 1993. It's really difficult to find people, but I just asked my friends, like, oh, yeah, I know you listen to that, and I know you, you, you like that stuff. Would you like to play heavy metal with me? And that's how it started. Yeah, because I feel like you guys, and I and I mean it as a compliment, but you guys, like when it, people hear Gothenburg metal, they instantly think it's going to sound like At the Gates or The Haunted or something like yeah. that. But I feel like you guys, you, you, I feel like you're not, you are a metal band from Sweden, but you are not like involved in like the death metal scene. No, no, it's true. Uh, Hammerfall has never been anything but a heavy metal band. That's just from, from day one. That was actually the whole idea behind the band. I wanted to, to play the music that I loved more than anything else. I did play death metal before and after this uh, as well, but uh, and during, rather, I should say. But uh, it, it was Hammerfall was not a, a death metal band that became a heavy metal band. It, was, it started as heavy metal, just as a break from everything else. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Uh, you have that tour coming uh, with uh, with a uh, Beast in Black and Edge of Paradise. Well, is there just anything else you'd like to promote? No, uh, other than uh, I hope to see you guys there because you know it's going to be fun. Today is, is sixty minutes, uh, balls out, full full throttle, so to speak. Uh, but uh, next time we come back, we're going to have a full headline show for you. So awesome. it'll be different. It'll be equally fun, but. Uh, you know, just because you saw us today, come back next year. We guarantee you it'll be an even better time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Oscar. No worries. Thank Everybody, Oscar of Hammerfall Pickup Dominion. If you haven't already, this is Alex from Heavy New York. We'll see you next time.